This is the new iPhone 16 and I got the teal color this year so the unboxing has just kind of become a very sad and uh, unamusing experience altogether. You have the two plastic pool tabs, not the plastic, I'm sorry, the paper pool tabs of course. Apple is going all uh, re renewable and recyclable with their packaging. Uh, the box has iPhone, Apple logo, iPhone, Apple logo, and it's all color matched to the color of the phone you buy. And I do have to give props to one thing about Apple. Their attention to detail still is there even though they downsize the packaging. Um, if you guys run your hand over the uh, top of the iPhone box, the uh, iPhone is embossed. And then not only is the iPhone embossed, this camera ring is embossed, and not only is the camera ring embossed, but the lens is embossed as well. So you can clearly feel the two lenses, and then the uh, camera island over here, and the phone as well. So that's a, it's a small little attention to detail thing that uh, I appreciate, and that's the stuff I used to love seeing when I did unboxing uh, videos back in the day. But uh, we are kind of done with that era, so lifting up the box. There we go, we have the new teal iPhone, and I have to say, um, big fan of the color this year, this teal color. I usually am always so confused about what phone, what color to get. This year, both the colors were very simple for the 16 Pro Max and the 16. Um, I saw this teal and I was like, you know what, this is what makes sense this year. This looks really, really good. And um, I have to say, the cameras look massive. It just, it's, it's, quite a lot like I don't know I, I think I've gotten used to this kind of diagonal design where it, it doesn't look as um, I don't know it just these the cameras are physically bigger as well and then the phone just looks the cameras look a lot bigger because they're in that up um, uh, top and bottom orientation uh, inside the phone and sorry inside the box the uh, only thing you get is a braided USB C to C cable this is only USB 2.0 supported I mean it's not like the 16 has more than that anyways but this is 2.0 supported and you've got a sim card tool and then under that you've got paperwork which has exactly one piece of paper that says iPhone which seems kind of unnecessary and then you've got this little booklet that has a couple of pages in it. And that's about it. The, the unboxing experience, as I said, has become a very sad and uninviting thing of the, of, of the last couple of years. So um, let's go ahead and look at the phone. Oh, by the way, the phone color and the color of the box, a little bit different. This is way more muted than the actual phone itself, which I actually like because I did want the color to be a little bit more um, bold. So picking the phone up and on the side, of course, the first thing is this new camera button. And then there's also the power button on this side. You've got the SIM card tray over here, volume down, volume up, and the alert slider, which is um, gone and now replaced with the action button. Um, the 15 had the alert slider. Now that is officially dead on all new iPhones. And then of course the front does have uh, little icons on the screen protector to show you what each button is, which is absolutely awesome. You can see like this is for your, I mean you can change this, but they do still show that it's for like your mute switch, volume up, volume down, power, and the camera button. And then at the bottom also, you do have that uh, little charge symbol to indicate that's where you plug your phone into charge. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys that awesome peel experience, even though it hasn't been that great over the last couple of years, but uh, here we go. All right, so there we go. And as it's been over the last couple of years, the peels have just gotten less and less satisfying. There's almost no noise or static friction left. Um, there just used to be such a nice little cling to the uh, plastic that used to be on the phone back in the day, but uh, that is now gone. So let's go ahead and boot up the phone. And I'm actually gonna run through the setup this time because the unboxing experience is so, um, boring. I just realized that I haven't really done a setup process in a long time and I want to see what iOS 18 like is because it's kind of had a lot of new design changes over the last couple of years um, and I haven't really done a fresh setup because I just restore from backup so I'm excited to see what the changes are and that actually booted up real quick. And on another note, when I set this phone down it immediately started rocking side to side. So this phone is terrible. It's just rocking so bad. Like it, it's uneven. Like it's sitting um, a skew on, on the desk, which I don't like. This is going to be terrible for caseless. 
Um, Cause I mean, when you put the uh, iPhone 15 down, at least it doesn't rock. The second I put this down, it rocks. You guys, I don't know if the camera is picking that up, but I put this down, it's solid. I put this down, it's rocking. It's fluttering back and forth. Not great. I, I am not a fan of that, but let's go ahead and run through the setup, setup process. English, United States, default, set up without another device. That's where I usually pick um, my port. Let me just go ahead and enter in my password. So I might end up just um, not showing you guys the screen during some parts of this video. Um, that's just gonna be when I'm entering some uh, private details or something. Uh, so it says it may take a few minutes for your phone to activate. So we're just gonna let that run through. Uh, let me go ahead and see if I can punch into the screen there a little bit more so you guys have a better look. And I mean, the one thing I have to say about um, this year's upgrade is that it's very minimal but it does bump up things in a lot of good places. So data and privacy as usual, set up for a child or myself. I do remember this being in a couple of older versions. So let's see what if there's anything different with the face ID setup. No, no nothing in particular. I do notice that it does come out of the dynamic island now though, so that's cool. There we go. And sure, I'll, I'll set one up with a mask too. There we go, pretty quick, efficient. If you know what you're doing now, Face ID setup is very easy and doesn't take a lot of effort. Uh, I, I found that, you know, Face ID is just, honestly, I, I didn't like it initially, but I, I've learned to really love it and I'm glad that we have Face ID now. For now, I'm not gonna transfer anything because it'll take forever. I'm just gonna log into my Apple account and get things rolling. As I was saying, you know, this year the upgrades have not been that substantial but everything has been good. I was just telling this to someone. It has, everything is improved over the iPhone 15 and there's no real disadvantages to it. Like they haven't removed anything or made any changes or increased the price in a way that um, you might find problematic. Like there's nothing bad when you compare the 15 to the 16. So that's a very positive thing if you're in the market for a new phone. All right, so got my Apple ID entered in. I love this um, setup. Uh, it's just so cool. The the animation just looks that that little touch. I'm I'm telling you, there are little touches throughout the um, iPhone that I, I very much so enjoy, and this is one of them. You don't get to see this very often. You only see it when you set up the phone. So I, I love seeing this animation. But as I was saying, you know, the 16 is. It starts off really strong, so I'm, I think that it's gonna be hard to find a lot wrong with this phone. I think that whatever there's gonna be wrong with it is gonna be nitpicks. Um, so let me go ahead and go through this process and then I'll keep talking about the phone. Um, I, yeah, I'll take location services, that's fine. It's funny how some things should be really quick and they take forever and then some things should be slow and they take quick, they're really quick, I, I don't know. It's Setup process is always interesting, but um, looking at the side, this is very similar to just the, um, the the 5G antenna millimeter wave cutout that you have on the um, US market phones. Uh, if you didn't tell me this was a button, I would have just seen it and have assumed that that's what that was. I wouldn't have even tried to click on it. But yeah, it, it is quite an interesting decision to place um, another button on, on the side of the iPhone. There, there hasn't really been an addition of buttons um, in the longest time. And then the like, last two years, we've had two different buttons come into the phone, which is, I mean, not really very common for uh, Apple. They, they're, they've been very intent on kind of minimalizing and keeping things clean. So adding buttons was something that I was personally, you know, were not expecting, but it's good to see. Having more uh, physical ways to interact with your phone is not a bad thing if executed right, in my opinion. Like, I'm not anti-button, but it shouldn't be a repetitive or unnecessary button. We don't need buttons for everything, but some buttons are great. So it does let you customize the action button right from the phone. And I love the animations. The animations of this really are great. So you can choose your camera, flashlight, voice memo. Oh, it lets you do Shazam from the setup menu itself, then translate. That's new, that's an iOS 18 thing. Magnifier, shortcut was there before. Accessibility, you can choose, or no action. So they've definitely added more action button features on iOS 18. This was not there on iOS 17. You could um, not do Shazam and stuff directly from the um, action button. So that's awesome. Um, if you're 
look into that. I think that I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it on the camera because that's usually what I use the most. But there's actually, there's no point to it, I just realized because there's a new camera button. So click camera control to open the camera app and then click again to use the camera control as a shutter. So it does give you a little walkthrough of this. So continue, okay. Yeah, and it, it feels pretty tactile. So yeah, that's awesome. Just say Siri. Yeah, sure. Continue. The colors of the the colors of the sky. The colors of the the colors of the sky. The colors of the sky. The colors of the sky fade with the setting sun as the stars. All right. So a couple of Siri voices there. Not now. Emergency SOS. You can press and hold for the emergency button and then there's a crash detection and emergency sa uh, SOS via satellite as well, which is not available everywhere which I feel like should be. That's, that's just one of those features I hope is uh, set up for everywhere pretty soon. And then welcome to iPhone swipe up to get started. There we go. This page, very familiar. This looks identical to um, the iPhone 15. Now uh, the entire layout and the even the screen is the same. You do get the same screen. So in fact, um, the screen protector uh, is common between the iPhone uh, 16 and the 15. Not a bad thing, this is a pretty good screen, so not gonna complain about that. Looks like there's a software update. No, no, not a software update, but finish setting up your iPhone. I will do that later. General, let's see if this is on, it's on 18.0. I don't think there's any software updates as of now, so this is running the newest software out of the box, which is fine. Sometimes there was like, I believe it was the iPhone 14. They, they needed to do a software update like the day or the next day after launch because um, there was an issue with like the eSIM stuff. So that was, um, uh, that was a thing that I remember. It was very frustrating because I couldn't get my eSIM set up that day and I was just very frustrated, but it turned out it needed a software upgrade. But uh, yeah, that is the setup process. And then let's take a look at the phone itself. I, I have guided you guys through the buttons before, so let's look at the back. And the camera is um, quite, I wanna say like elevated, but honestly not more elevated than the uh, iPhone 15 was. In fact, I think it might actually not be as elevated as before. Um, that I will have to take measurements to figure out, but it, it on visual inspection, it does not look like it. It looks like the uh, 16 protrudes a little bit less than the 15. Uh, dimensions wise, they stand pretty much the same. The antenna locations are all the same as well. Um, and then, yeah, at the bottom you've got your speaker, microphone, and then the uh, USB-C charging port. And the USB-C charging port on the inside is also matched to the color of the phone, which is nice. Um, I don't know if it's gonna pick up on the camera properly, but you guys can see there's that pink in there and then the green in there. So little little attention to detail. This could have just been black and nobody would have seen or cared, but I, I like seeing that. So one of the features of the iPhone 16 I um, was excited to see was that they have brought macro mode to the iPhone as well. And I think that that's super, super important because nowadays um, there's one thing that I've noticed um, the thing I noticed was that you get a lot of QR codes or small QR codes on products, restaurants, anywhere you go. And if you don't have macro mode, you have to like adjust up and back and make sure like the uh, camera can read the QR codes, which can be difficult depending on what sizes they are. So right now this is able to read it, read it quite easily, but let me pull out my iPhone uh, 16, 15, and you guys can see I'm holding it close and it, it takes a little, little bit longer. Sometimes it doesn't get the QR code at all if you're too close to it because it just can't read it. I mean, this QR code is pretty decently sized, but some QR codes are super small or not well placed and that becomes a problem and you're just not able to focus and then you have to just kind of like move the phone up and back and, and it gets a little bit um, challenging because it's not able to focus on things that are close by. So having that macro mode is gonna be an absolute, um, I think it's, it's key now. Beyond that, uh, I did give the speakers a little bit of a quick listen. Both sound very comparable. The iPhone 16 maybe, maybe a bit louder, um, but I I don't think that it's honestly noticeable even if you have the phone side by side. It was just maybe even um, biased towards that this being a new phone. So I was just looking for something to find different. That might just be that. So pretty equivalent um, level there. Good quality speakers on both of these phones regardless. So the iPhone 16 um, initial impressions, I, I'm really liking it. Let me go ahead and try out uh, the camera uh, button here because that's kind of one of those new things. So uh, a light press it has allowed me to open up that uh, the, the control for zoom. 
So let me go ahead and do that. And one of my biggest concerns about this, and it, it's always about using zoom, is that I don't want the zoom to be like at 1.1x or 0.9x whenever I'm moving my zoom around because like I don't, particularly I don't want it to drop from 1 to 1 point, like 0.9 because that changes the camera lens and the quality significantly depending on what position or situation you're in. So um, let's see what this does. So you have to half press it. So you do need to apply a little bit of pressure and moving this, okay. So it is snapping into place. It's not like just randomly doing things. Once you're past two X and that's when it's um, not snapping, but like moving from one to this, if you swipe very quickly, uh, it does seem to move up to the next ones. But if you're on two, um, it just completely takes you to 0.5 X. Uh, like just look at the swipe, 0.5 X. But if I do a uh, quick swipe, on 0.5, it's just gonna take me to, oh, it takes me to two. All right, so I was wrong about that. But yeah, this is gonna take a little bit of getting used to. A quick swipe takes you to the next camera mode, but if you're too quick, it's gonna take you all the way to the highest one. So uh, the iPhone 16 only has 0.5, one and two, but if you have the Pro, that's gonna go up to 5X as well. So that's gonna be something to keep in mind. And another thing that I am finding a little bit annoying is that it's not always active. Um, so say I'm just doing something here and I want to quickly slide it. I can't, I first need to do a half press and then it activates. So that's two steps to do something that should be one step. I, I feel it should just be active and looking for, um, touches, especially if I'm in the camera app and you know, that that's something I hope that they can change in the future because that feels a little bit, it feels like it's two steps. I could just instead quickly tap it with my finger. Like that's how quick it is. So let me see how it works on portrait mode. So in portrait mode, I can go one X or I can go two X. So for this, that I think I, I can use a lot more portrait mode. I end up finding myself wanting to change between the lenses a lot, but the orientation of the portrait like um, switching is a little bit difficult because it's on the uh, side here. And if you have the 16 Pro Max, that's gonna have three different lens options. And I always find myself tapping the wrong one when I need it, uh, a little bit problematic. For the uh, portrait though on the iPhone uh, for the 16, uh, I'm swiping my finger and it's it's inconsistent. Sometimes it takes me right to 2X, sometimes it doesn't. It, it just like randomly goes to 1.2X. So that is gonna be something I think is gonna need a little bit of practice to making sure that you're able to um, get it right. And then let's see if I can get uh, like the other modes. Let's see, no. Okay, now you go. If you touch it, then you'll get other modes. And I'm not liking how much of the screen it just ends up taking up. Like it's eating into my photo a lot. So if I have this mode enabled, um, it's it's eating into the photo a lot more. I feel like there could have been a slightly different way to in, in implement the uh, graphic that comes up, which um, if you look at it now, like the, so much of the screen is just dead. It, it's like you can't see much when you're uh, toggling this. You only see like, uh, this square, even with a square, this this notch cut out on the top. Um, well, we're right back to the good old iPhone notch days with this um, feature. So I think that there's a little bit more implementation required. How much I'm gonna end up using this, I don't know because I don't like the mild jitters that happens when you sometimes use a, uh, a button like this because this button is quite far away to the top when you're doing portrait mode. So it's not, it, if it was here, it would have been a little bit easier and you would have minimized the uh, shake. But since it's here, you're gonna have to move your hands all the way up here and then do it. And it just, you will end up like that. The pressure you put is going to move the phone a little bit. And I don't want that to end up, you know, causing my photos to look bad because it's shaken or something. But that is going to be something I'm going to have to explore a little bit more and see. I think that if you're using your phone like this and you just want to take a quick picture, that's a lot easier. Portrait photos are going to be a little bit easier to uh, take with your thumb, but um, the landscape ones are, are seeming to be a little bit more difficult here to manage. So that's an interesting uh, approach here. Uh, another thing I'm noticing, my phone is getting quite warm already. Uh, of course, brand new phone, so it's gonna take a little bit of time, but initial impressions, phone is a little bit warm just after being set up. Uh, it's not, it's, it's you know, the one of the other things about this phone was that it does have better internals and cooling as well as the newest chipset. Uh, it has the A18 Bionic instead of the A16 which was on this phone, even though it's just one year old. So that's that's an, uh, that's an upgrade as well. Um, overall, the iPhone is, 
as I said, so far I've I've not seen anything on this that would dissuade me from recommending this. Yes, the camera shutter button isn't, you know, something that I think is executed perfectly right now, but that doesn't make this any worse than the iPhone 16. It's not like you had to compromise on something to get this button. Like it's just a freebie that isn't that great. So you can just ignore it if you don't like it. So that is something that um, I am okay with, even if it's not the greatest right now. So overall, iPhone 16, very, very impressive right off the bat. I think that this is gonna be a great seller and a very easy phone to recommend to anybody. Yes, the iPhone 15 is still a great phone, but if you're looking to buy this and you only have $100 of difference in the price, I think for the better performance, better camera, better battery, and better longevity of this phone because it has a two year newer chipset, I think that it would be a little bit unwise to buy the 15 if you're planning on holding the phone for a long time. If you're somebody who swaps out your phone every year, two years at most, then you don't have to worry too much about it. But if you're somebody who likes to keep your phone for three, four, five years, as most people do these days, then the extra $100, I think right off the bat is a very easy recommend. So um, that's it for this one, guys. If you have any questions about the iPhone 16 and in comparison to the iPhone 15, or if you want me to try it out anything in particular, please let me know down in the comments below. And I would love to hear your thoughts on the iPhone 16. Uh, are you guys interested by it? Do you think it's too similar to the 15 to even count as an upgrade? Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know down in the comments below. If you want to check out any of these phones, I'll have them linked down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one.